Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Darcy, the Witch of Illusions from the Winx Club. This is the second video in our Winx series, so if like us, you like the Winx Club, you may want to watch our stormy video we did last month. In the show, it's not clear if Icy, Darcy and Stormy are real sisters or just best friends that call themselves sisters, but we decided to use the same combination as we used for Stormy. I have this cheap version of Raven Queen from Ever After High, with cute face but with posable arms and molded clothing. I'm going to combine her face with this original Raven body. Their skin tones are slightly different, but after some blushing it won't be a problem. To take their heads off, I'm pouring boiling water into mugs and soak the dolls in it. Now the vinyl head is soft enough to take off the head without breaking the neck back. The first step is always to remove the hair, so I'm cutting them as close to the head as possible. Using the same scissors, I'm removing the rest from inside and pull out the ends through the neck hole using tweezers. I'm using acetone to wipe off her factory makeup and scalp paint. For the main part of the head, I'm going to use Hot Toffee Nylon from Retro Dolls UK. I'm repainting the head brown and blonde to match the color of the hair. The rooting process is the same as always. I'm taking a small strand, wrapping it around my finger, threading the needle, poking it into a hole and repeating it a million times. I left some holes empty because I want her hair to look slick. I made one side of the part and now I'm rerouting the other side using the same holes. The last thing is to give her the signature blonde strands in the front and for this I'm using buttercream kiwi nylon. I blend some of the hair for a smoother transition. We ran out of our trusty polymer glue and we tried to use another one from the same company, but it wasn't good enough. I poured some of the proper glue later. You may have noticed my recent obsession with heat transfer vinyls and this video isn't indifferent. We're gonna press some vinyl, okay? I'm taping over my paper printout to make it stronger and I'm tracing over my shapes with a sharp exacto knife. Now that I have a template, I'm tracing the shape, pushing my knife lightly to cut only through the vinyl and not the backing. I can now weed out any pieces of the vinyl that I don't want to press and, well, press. I used my template to see if I had left enough fabric to cut two leg pieces for the trousers. Did I mention we're making trousers? We're making trousers. Align, press and peel. I used the template again, this time to actually trace the pieces I was supposed to cut out. They turned out a bit sheer, so I decided to iron on some black interfacing to stiffen it up a little bit. The second ironing left a texture on the vinyl, so maybe do them in reverse. Now for the actual pants tutorial. I give credit where credit is due. Originally the pattern is from Pop and Atelier. But I've adapted it with a written instruction, which you can find in the link below. Trousers are easy. Hem bottom, join pieces right sides together on the front fully and on the back partially, flip and sew the legs shut, hem the top and that's it. Make sure you backstitch or tie your threads. To protect the nylon hair from being destroyed by MSC, I'm covering the head with a piece of cloth and pins. I'm starting with shading with pastels and the sketch with brown pencil. If I make a mistake, the brown pencil is easier to remove than the black because it's less pigmented. I aim for a Jessica Rabbit inspired glance with half closed eyes, high eyelids and high eyebrows. For Darcy's makeup, I couldn't resist the temptation of a smoky eye. She's my favorite of tricks and she has to be perfect. Because her original color palette includes a lot of purple, 
I'm doing her eyeshadow with a purple pastel, but I couldn't achieve the vibrant color, so I switched to watercolor pencils. I'm doing the blushing and shading here and there to give the face some realistic touches. One of the most satisfying things for me is painting all the white parts on the face. It brings so much life to the doll. With watered-down white paint, I'm detailing the eyelids to pop out even more. This is something that I've learned from watching drag makeup tutorials. I think that Darcy needs long eyelashes on the upper eyelid. I wanted to try a different technique of drawing lower lashes, which is this cross-like method. After that, I'm adding white and golden details. You may have noticed that I like to add freckles and skin texture, and Darcy will not be an exception. I'm drawing light brown dots on her nose and cheeks, and then painting them white and golden. To finish the look, I'm adding two coats of Perlex Powder Shine. I wanted to do something similar as we did for Stormy's Lightnings, but different. We came up with a sketch of kind of like a halo, but with some dark magic orbs. I modeled it in Fusion 360, split it into parts and sent it to my resin printer, because we are going to cast them in resin later. After that printed, I had some post-production to do. You can see a before and after sanding. We also added some primer. Next, I built my mold box. I thought it through to waste as little silicon as I could, because it's expensive. I built it with tape a thin acrylic sheet and plasticine. The plasticine is there to help make the mold level and help with releasing the silicon lighter. I pushed everything down into the plasticine as best I could and it's time to welcome you again to the Hazardous Materials Lab. Starting off with silicon, I'm mixing it according to the instructions on the packaging. I try to pour with a thin stream to discourage air bubbles to form. After I fill my mold, it's time to bang the table like a madman or madwoman to help the bubbles reach the surface. You can also blow through a straw to pop the bubbles on the surface. After that's cured, I release the mold and start mixing some resin. I was going for that petri dish effect, but the domes were too small to make it noticeable. I tried a second time with a different approach and had Alex paint the first failed batch. Which, needless to say, was the best one. Now let's see what a feat of engineering this thing is. You push one half of the orb into the mold, pour resin on top and join the other half of the orb with the resin that also is the halo. Does that make sense? I hope it does. After the curing, we took the halo out of the mold and the edges required some sanding. I found this necklace in our stock box and I think it can work as a holder for the halo. Just like with Stormy's wings, we want it to be removable. My first try was the hot glue, but the orbs are too heavy for it. We didn't notice it earlier, but the resin from which the halo is made is too flexible to stand straight and hold the spheres up. I had to change the design a little bit. I'm using hot glue again, but this time I'm adding a wooden armature between the resin pieces and wrapping it with a lot of wire. I know it's not the elegant solution, but it works. I gave the wire a coat of hot glue and attached the necklace and now I'm painting this thing with dark purple paint. Do you remember me talking about Raven's molded clothing? Now I'm going to do the same with Darcy's top. Usually I'm not responsible for clothes, but Barb said that if I want the look from the concept art, it had to be sculpted. After sketching the outline of the top, I'm grabbing our best toxic friend, epoxy sculpt. Always wear gloves when handling it. I'm roughly building the clay on the torso and then smoothing it with a cocktail stick. My idea for this top was to refer to Darcy's casual outfit from the first season. When the basic shape is ready, I'm smoothing it again, but this time with watered finger and a brush. After it cures completely, I'm sanding it for a better look. 
Our Stormy had a lot of strong body blushing, but I think that Darcy should have some brown touches to make the plastic look a little more realistic. At this time we are going to use purples and pinks as Darcy's color palette, so I'm painting the top in these colors. After Barb made these gorgeous pants with golden stripes, I wanted to paint the swirls to match the rest, so I'm adding the hint of gold. I imagine Darcy as an intelligent and elegant but also dangerous witch, and I think some tattoos will be perfect to bring out her rebellious side. I'm painting them with purple paint on her neck and arms. The paint needs protection, so I'm covering tattoos with matte acrylic varnish to prevent it rubbing off. As for accessories, I chose to trim some stock Monster High shoes to a more interesting shape, which I did using a sharp X-Acto knife. I cut along existing mold lines, so it was pretty easy. I made her some nail extensions, just like I did for Stormy. I've also sewn her a black coat, to which a tutorial has also already been filmed, and you can see it in depth in our Yulanthi video. Both of the videos will be linked below. It's time to style the hair. I was trying some braiding, but I didn't like the first two results, and in the end, I made a really simple short braid. I'm gluing a cute accessory made from an accidental resin drip at the back. I really like the moon motif and Darcy looks like she could enjoy having this kind of decoration on her face, so I'm painting the little golden moon on her forehead. We want to keep the shoes dark and simple, but I thought they can work better with overall color scheme if I paint them purple. They still look black, but now it's the right shade of black. I found these metallic decorations that we received from one of our swap partners and I'm gluing them on the shoes. I wanted to spice up the pants a little bit and I'm adding the metallic accessories in the front. After attaching the earrings, Darcy is finally finished. This is how she turned out. While the photos scroll through the screen, we'd like to bring up the fact that because of the new policy of YouTube, forced by the FTC. Starting from January 1st, some of our videos might be relocated to YouTube Kids or have disabled comments, notifications and ads. This may not sound like the end of the world to some of you, but for family-friendly content creators, it's a big struggle. We're asking you to sign a petition to help save the doll and craft community on YouTube. All you need to know is in the description box below. As for this year, there will be two more videos coming, a collab video in the beginning of December and a Christmas special video. So if you want to participate in the creation of the Christmas doll, make sure to comment down below your ideas, styles, color schemes, anything you can think of. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. To protect the nail and hair from being destroyed by MSC, I'm covering the head with a piece of cloth and pins. To będzie w the best of.